How are you, my friend? Oh, good. How are you, Mr. President? Well, you've been having hell, haven't you? Well, you've got all these, these boys out here. They, because I'm, I guess, a Johnson man, the King Rally on the week of Sunday was 50% Johnson. Johnson the killer, Johnson the destroyer of human uh, life, Johnson the killer in Vietnam. But uh, I think there's something that has to be dealt with very sternly and quickly, and that's the formation of this national gang picture that's taken place all over our country. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a call from some of the mayors, and they wanted to call a conference to put it on your lap, and I said, well, now wait a minute. What the hell, everyone tries to deliver the responsibility to someone else. Uh, there's no point in that. And they were greatly disturbed about Humphrey's statement that the National Guard won't solve anything, that if he were in the area, he'd act the same way. Mm. I don't know where the hell we're going. Mm -hmm. We're out here trying to defend the national picture and trying to do everything. When there's $800 million held up with the urban renewal in Washington for all the cities of America because they haven't got the money, and we don't know if there's anything about that. I don't know why some of these Washington men are sounding off about the Guard. The Guard was called to save life and protect law and order. I didn't know Humphrey had said anything about the guard. Well, I think the mayors are goddamn tired of listening to people like Humphrey sound off. I was talking about the proposition. This was a speech in New Orleans today. And if he were in the area, he'd act the same way. And if he were in Chicago, and I were the mayor, he'd be locked up like anyone else. Because that's what his attitude is. Because I think we've gone a long way with the good doctor, uh, Mr. President. He not your friend, he's against you in Vietnam, he's a goddamn faker. He comes out here and he shows a picture of what this has been going on for a year, it's nothing new. And I confronted him with it the other day and told him right in the meeting, and he, and he refused, he said he didn't know. I said, doctor, don't give me that, you know. Well, let me give you some documentation. Here it is, here's your people. So this thing is, in my picture, uh, opinion on national. Uh, Subject. I don't know how the hell we approach it. Mm -hmm. It's the most dangerous thing we have in facing our country. You've got the whole goddamn poverty program all wrapped up in it. You've got all, a lot of people in poverty uh, subversive as far as the national government of Vietnam, as far as the local government. It's a complete test, as I see it, of trying to have law and order in government or trying to have this other thing take over with constant agitation with the criticism of the president on Vietnam and the both forces are very close together and then also this very realistic national organization which is becoming extortion in all the big cities. They're mm -hmm. going in and telling the people, you either pay us off or we'll knock your windows out or we'll give you a Molotov cocktail mm -hmm. or we'll do something else. Now we, we have identified some of these people, I don't know also, what's wrong with the FBI, because they say they have observers and all this, but hell, they, we never come up with anything. Now, we know that they've come in here, and we know that there's, there's people uh, acting, and we know that there must be some money passed someplace. We've infiltrated them, tried to. We've got part of the story, and we're getting part of it again, but it seems to me that we're in a situation when a site in Cleveland Talk to the mayor down there, and it has the same connotation as it is up here. It strikes in San Francisco, it strikes in, in New York, it strikes in the southern city, and it all has the same pattern. We've got a lot of organizations in our country that are breeding nothing but hatred of the president, hatred of the government, and open and armed rebellion. You see the picture in Life magazine last week of what? They're training kids 9, 10, 11 years of age, how to operate, how to do all this guerrilla warfare and all this. I, I really think there's a, a very acute national picture that has to have some adjustment. Your men came in Saturday, John Doerr from Civil Liberties and Mr. Wilkins from the community, and I said to them, well, is the Justice Department doing anything about this gang picture all over the country? Well, they didn't know. Well, they didn't know. Someone would start to look into it. 
to see the relationship of one gang to the other, to see the way that people come from the poverty program to New York and to Chicago and agitate the trouble and start and we've identified. And we've named it. And, and we've pointed it out. And the press come out today again and in our city with the complete report on the organization known as RAM, R-A-M, which is the pro Castro outfit that came back from Cuba operating out of New York. Now they've been messed up in your outfit? Oh, sure. Because they, what they do is move all around the country. We, uh, we have to do something where our fellows are in there, our police and captains, our workers, they're all in and out of there and they're trying to, we're trying to get more and more information. Very cleverly done. It isn't, a, it isn't something that's crudely done or uncrudely done. It's done with a lot of intelligence. And we've been trying to infiltrate this outfit to find out who are the people that are giving the orders. We identify a half a dozen of them. Beyond that identification, you can't go any further. But if they arouse the young people between 9 and 12 years of age, which they have in our city, I'm told the same thing in Cleveland, the same thing in Los Angeles, to this lawlessness and disorder, we're going to be in one hell of a shape. What shape have you got King in? Is he about ready to get out? Well, uh, I don't think so. I don't know, but after all, uh, he started this thing out here. He started on a Sunday. And 200 of these young fellows from a gang out that stood out in the field and wouldn't get off. And he kept hollering about Black Knees and Uncle Towns and Johnson and Daly and everyone else. That, and they wouldn't get off the field. And then all that would... But uh, uh, it's important is that they, the same outfit, the commies and all that, are tied up with the anti-Vietnam. And then the uh, religious leaders and all them are all out on the civil rights. And you're having a hell of a time to define between civil rights as civil rights. Well, as I said to them, no one has done more for these people than President Johnson. And I said, who do you think supports Johnson? It's people like myself and people like the Democratic Party of Cook County. Now, for you to come in here and start asking us about the next vote in the Congress, it's ridiculous. Why the hell don't you go someplace and ask them that haven't been voting with Johnson? Mm -hmm. And I said, Doctor, the man you presented to me, 31 demands, you could have presented them any place, any city in the country, including your own city of Atlanta. He said, that's right. And I said, well, why are you presenting them here? Well, he said, the reason we're presenting them here is you've got such a fine city, such a wonderful city. We've given so much opportunity to our Negro. Forty-seven percent of the Negro population is in the middle of that. Yeah, but I said, you never say that. And you never say it publicly. You're appealing to these people that are responsible for a lot of this trouble. And when I put it on them, on this, his people, we had the documentation. We got it. It's paid that was in records and everything else. His people have been in here for a year. And frankly and honestly, behind the whole picture, Mr. President, I really think there's a hell of a lot of politics. What do you think? Who, what do you think it is, Dick? Oh, yeah. They, well, this, this tonight, even Billy Graham said the whole thing in Chicago is a political issue. Because every goddamn time they come in, can you imagine presenting some demands for uh, civil rights Either by asking about new precinct captains in certain sections of the city. New precinct captains. I said, well, is, is this a civil rights demand? Or is this a political demand? Then they have the fellow with them. Uh, this, one of the specialists is consultant in the Church Federation. He's a Republican Ward Committeeman. And I said, well, Senator, his name is Senator Robinson, the Democratic Party of Chicago must be doing pretty good towards the Negro. Or we wouldn't be winning the election we've won for the last 20 years. And for you to come in here and start telling me, as a leader of the Democratic Party, who we should select as preaching captain, I just wonder, doctor, and I turn to Dr. King, how this fits into the civil rights program. And I, uh, I really think that the, this whole thing planned throughout the nation, and I think it's going to happen in every large city, and I think they've used the police department to, uh, on this 
police brutality all out of proportion. I think you've got weak mares like Lindsay that folded up on the police. Well, he's turned the whole thing over to them. What the hell is happening in the department? No one knows. And our fellow says, who I have great respect for O.W. Wilson, that if you break down on this civilian police force, this is the first step of the breakdown of law enforcement on the local level. And when you get that, he says, you have lawless. And he says, how are you going to get policemen to enforce the law or to try to cope with some of these riotous situations if they're going to be constantly confronted with a civilian police force? And I stood up with this. They wanted a civilian police force. And I said, well, gentlemen, why don't we stop to and make a general charge to this fellow? Why don't you document it or anyone else and bring the name and the place and the interview and then let that investigate? Don't be saying that our entire police department, 14,000 men, are all brutal or beat up people and all that. But what about all the police that are injured? What about the police captain who shot in the back standing in the place of They've been, uh, they're whipping it up pretty good. Do you, uh, do you think that you got things pretty good shape in Chicago? Uh, well, as good as they can be, but we need some, some kind of federal help to shut off this gang situation. This gang situation in New York, in Los Angeles, in Philadelphia, in Cleveland, in Pittsburgh, in Detroit, uh, in San Francisco is no good. And if it's allowed to go unabated, if it's allowed to go and fester the way it is, the majority of them are headed, as you know, by ex-convicts, dope pushers, uh, robbery with a gun, uh, all of this kind of business, and there, something has to be done, Mr. President, on the sale of the guns. We, outside the suburbs, in the city, we have control, but what the hell in the suburbs did there? Uh, you go out to all around our suburbs, and you have people out there, especially the non-white, or buying guns right and left, shotguns and rifles, and pistols and everything else, there's no registration or isn't a damn thing. Something has to be done on this gun law. Because you see the same thing happen in uh, Cleveland that happened here, snipers shooting off the roof at police. Well, uh, where the hell did they get the weapon? And there's no, and you know, you, they've had trouble with this national gun law, but after the president's assassination, someone felt to do something. We thought so, but you can't get the Congress to vote for it. These damn no, con conservation right. leagues and everybody comes in. Guys, guys, God, when they see this thing that's happening here, they get the back. And you see a lot of people are trying to put it under the mushroom of civil rights. Mm -hmm. This isn't civil rights. This is civil disorder. Mm -hmm. There's no civil, what the hell out here? They've been voting, as I pointed out to the good doctor. We had police captains, Negro police captains, 40 years ago in Chicago. We had chiefs of the fire department. Today, we have more Negro commanders in command of districts. Even they're coming in and talking to We have more Negro commanders than any city in the United States. We have more Negro fire officers, battalion chiefs, marchers. And we have a tremendous middle class Negro, but unfortunately, you know, the middle class.